Well, after an entertaining opening weekend to the championship season, and well, a pretty successful prediction week for me by normal standards, we are back today for match day two as things continue to get underway. I won't be keeping up to these games live because I will be at Brighton for Luton Town's Premier League debut, but we have got plenty of time to get our predictions in beforehand. So today, we'll go through the whole of Saturday's fixture list all of the games on Saturday due to the new Premier League season and I will give you my score predictions for every single one of them and a bit of reasoning behind it. We'll go through all of the results from last week in a minute. Thank you to the masses of you who played last weekend. One of you beat me and one of you were level. A lot of you close as well. But lots of goals, a few surprises. We'll talk about those in a minute. If you're looking forward to it, do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Thank you to HelloFresh for their support as always. And of course, I was looking ahead to Luton's Premier League season earlier in the week. You can find that up in the eye above. I am also going to chuck a quick caveat out as well. I'm recording this on Monday because I'm off to a couple of EFL Cup ties in the week, which you will have seen clips of on the channel, no doubt. And Leeds is one of those in the championship, so I'll get a closer look at those. But let's start with a quick recap of what we all predicted on match day one. And I've done pretty well here. 11 points, including two perfect scores, five correct outcomes, and then a dismal Sunday, which ruined everything. Prior to that, it had been spectacular, and I was looking like a bit of a genius for the new season. I got a perfect score on Friday night for Southampton, winning late on away at Sheffield Wednesday. And then the championship's favourite scoreline delivers. Some things never change. Swansea won, Birmingham City won. That was my second perfect score. Alex, a quick shout out to you. You got 11 points as well and were level with me. The final game of the weekend, you got the Ipswich score right, which got you back on level terms just in time. And Owen Co, the star of the show, 12 points, the only person to beat me, and three perfect scores on the opening weekend. That is no mean feat. Well done to you. So feel free to play along again this week as we head into match day two of the championship season. And we start with the early kickoff, the only game on TV it's a repeat of last year's championship playoff semi-final. It is Coventry versus Middlesbrough. Coventry incredibly unlucky against Leicester. They were 1-0 up. They were comfortable. They were controlling the game. They took advantage of Leicester's weakness, which was a set piece. But maybe they just made changes too early. And in the end, it was a one-man show that saw them off. So definitely signs that Coventry are going to be a threat as they were last season. They created chances. They were brilliant on the break. And... To be honest, going forward, they didn't really look like they missed your Keres, albeit they had some clear-cut chances, which they just didn't take. But Middlesbrough, a disappointing start against Millwall. I think a few of you alluded to it in the comments, particularly the Middlesbrough fans like Gordon, that maybe you're just not quite ready for this season yet. A lot of chatter around Tuber Akpom, a couple of players not quite fit, and while it was an attacking, aggressive Michael Carrick display, he didn't really create too many clear-cut chances and only two on target in the whole match. So I think it'll be a few weeks before we see the best of Borough. But I'm not too worried about them yet, if I'm being honest. Isaiah Jones did come back on off the bench, so maybe some positive signs as we go along. But for this game, I'm not really sure what to predict because there was such a wafer-thin difference between them last year when they played, particularly in those playoff matches. Are Coventry going to set up almost like an away team and almost just try and get Middlesbrough to play into their hands, or are they going to be a bit more front-footed? Are Middlesbrough at their best? Are they ready to take chances? Have they got that firepower in the team at the moment? I'm not too sure. And you know what it means when I'm not too sure? I'm thinking of sitting on the fence here with a championship's favourite scoreline. There is part of me that thinks Coventry might nick this snow because the only difference last time with Coventry is they came up against a man with a bit of magic. And for Middlesbrough, no one produced that at the weekend. So despite the fact I think this is going to be a one-all draw, I'm going to stick my neck on the line early. I'm going to go for Coventry to nick a one goal win. Let's move on to the 11 3 pm kickoffs, though, and we start with Birmingham City versus Leeds United. Birmingham with a one all draw away at Swansea, then Bele scoring on debut and looking very impressive. And let's be brutally honest about it, it was an awful bit of Swansea defending. It was exactly what we saw from them last year, but Birmingham, they took advantage, they were ruthless with it. It was a pretty even game overall by the looks of it and a draw was a fair result, but another solid start for Birmingham, who I think will be very comfortable this year. For Leeds though, just a very frustrating day. Of course, they got that late equaliser, which made it a decent day in the end because it looked like for some time they were going to be defeated. Of course, I'll be seeing them in midweek, so I might get a better view of them. I was baffled that Cody Drame wasn't in the squad. If that's not due to injury, I don't know why. 
because Luke Aylin, he couldn't get back into position at right back for the goals. And it, it was a hallmark. It was something that was noticeable in their play. So I really did find that a little bit odd. I can't lie to you. Sam Byram's come back into the club. Whether he'll slot in there eventually, I don't know. But yeah, from what I saw of Drame last season and at Cardiff the year before, I just found that a bit baffling. And I assume that maybe he's going to be off. Promising signs for Leeds were that Archie Gray looked great in the middle. They created hatfuls of chances to win the game, but they just didn't have a goal scorer on the pitch. Now, Gail Hart came on late, and of course, they had the four exciting wide players on the pitch all at once. Without Bamford again, though, have they got that goal threat? We mentioned in the preseason predictions that if they signed a the centre forward, I thought they'd win the league. And you just looked at that game and went, if they had a Joel Pirro up front, if they'd still had Rodrigo up front, they probably would have won by five or six goals to two, as they did in the FA Cup last year. So not panic stations, there were positive signs there, but not the perfect result to start off. Birmingham, we know, are rock solid at the back, and if Leeds give away a stupid goal, it could be a very difficult day. So for this reason, I am going to sit on the fence for this one. Leeds, if they take their chances, could run away with it, but I don't trust them enough at the back, so I am going to sit on the fence this time. I'll go for a championship's favourite scoreline of one goal apiece. Let's move on to what is expected to be a battle of the bottom third this year as Cardiff play against Queen's Park Rangers. Of course, Cardiff did get that point away at Ellen Road on Sunday, but there were still worrying signs for me. Yes, looked very clinical going forward. Two shots on target, two goals. Josh Bowler, creative, very important on the break. And good to see a few of their star players fit. But defensively, they haven't yet improved enough. And while Gutas is a decent addition, the same cracks were there and they were being carved open. And as I mentioned in the lead section, if they'd been up against a clinical attack, they could have let in four or five there. And that for me is the big worry with Cardiff because that hasn't improved from last season. So I don't think it's all roses and a mid-table finish despite what we saw there. I think it's going to be a difficult season for them. But they're playing QPR at the perfect time. A 4-0 defeat on the opening day. Still no centre-half fit. Still no Jimmy Dunn. The new signings not fully fit and integrating yet like Jack Colback who you would assume will make a difference and even the likes of Chris Willock being left on the bench because of problems from the friendly last week. It's a QPR side that's going to take a few weeks to settle and they're going to have to be patient as painful as it is. So I think for this occasion Cardiff have got to take advantage. We saw early last season they got a lot of 1-0 home wins but I don't know if I trust either defence here to only let in one goal. I feel like there's going to be goals and I'm going to go a bit higher. I'm going to go for Cardiff City to nick it by two goals to one. Let's move on to Huddersfield Town versus Leicester City. A game that I think is going to be very different to the two sides openers. Because Leicester, as we mentioned, snuck that win against Coventry in a game where they were largely uninspiring. They weren't great first half, they didn't create much. And then in the second half, they relied on one man's magic. Kean and Dewsbury Hall, to be honest, looked the only creative threat in the team. And in the end... As we saw so many times when he was at Luton, he was at his best. And he got Leicester three points in the end. It is as simple as that. I was a bit surprised they only went for Vardy through the middle and that Iheanacho and Daka didn't play more of a part. And we did see a few players that we'd maybe expect to be in the team not quite there. But the problem again for Leicester, defending corners. We've been saying it for over two years now. Leicester City cannot defend corners. They're not great defensively from open play either, mind you. But corners and set pieces is a huge concern. So that is something that has got to be addressed. We'd expect some of the other senior defenders to come back in soon. But yeah, that was definitely my main takeaway worry for them. For Huddersfield, disappointment away at Plymouth. They had chances at times as Plymouth tested them playing out from the back and they could have got back in the game. But the second half, they ran out of steam a little bit. And we said this before, didn't we? Huddersfield are going to need a few weeks to build the side. Late signings in the transfer window, free agents, loan deals. They've not got a big budget. But in terms of chances, they could have got something out of that game. The big moments, though, they didn't have the clinical edge. So on this occasion, I am going to go for a tighter game than people expect. I'd imagine most will have Leicester to win by three or four. It could work differently if Huddersfield were on the front foot and Leicester could catch them on the break. Huddersfield got defenders going off injured as well. But I'm going to go, perhaps surprisingly, for Huddersfield to get a result out of this. And I'm going to go for a little bit of a thriller. I'm going to go for two goals apiece. It's my wild card of the weekend. Let's move on to a game up in Yorkshire, which is Hull City versus Sheffield Wednesday. It is a big game between two sides that both were defeated by two goals to one on the opening day. Sheffield Wednesday conceded that late goal at home to Southampton. They were passed to death, as you would expect, against the Russell Martin team. But Lee Gregory almost managed to get them a point. 
Let's be honest though. Yes, they were in the game result-wise for most of it, but there wasn't a huge amount of encouraging signs in that performance. Of course, it's early. We mentioned Sheffield Wednesday. A lot of their signings have come later on and are still coming this week. Again, it's probably going to be a month or so before we see the best of them. But for Southampton, it was a pretty comfortable day in the end. Albeit, they made hard work of it in front of goal. A way to hold though, they'll see it as a better chance to get a result. A whole city side that lost their manager Liam Rossini up to a red card in the end and were ahead for most of the first half thanks to Liam Delap's goal. He adds a really crucial goal threat this season. If we're being honest, Norwich dominated the game and that late goal in the first half and the late goal in the second both thoroughly deserved, but awful times to concede. Hull City were very solid defensively after Rossini joined last year, but to concede 28 shots, albeit not a lot of them were on target, three or four of them were great opportunities to score, and on another day, Norwich might have had one or two more. Liam Delap will offer a threat on the break, but at home, they're going to have to break down what will be an organised team from Cisco. We saw it even at Watford when he was at a top side. He played very solidly, very defensively, and was able to break away with a very quick and aggressive front three. He might not have that at Sheffield Wednesday, but I'm going to go for this to be a pretty poor low-scoring game. And I know it's a little bit of a gamble, but I'm going to go for a 1-0 Hull City win, and their first clean sheet of the season. Let's move on to Ipswich Town versus Stoke City, two sides that, in stages, wowed on the opening day. Ipswich went away to Sunderland and got a very good three points. In the first half, it was a fairly evenly matched game, but Ipswich on the counter, they're rapid, they're aggressive, and they took their chances, to be fair. George Hurst delivering quality that, at times, many didn't believe he had, and Broadhead, of course, showing his quality too. It is an Ipswich side that I still don't think are going to finish as high as some predict, but they will be so comfortable this year. A very good performance for them and a crucial three points. But Stoke, well, probably the stars of the weekend because they came up against the Rotherham side and they played them off the park. Some of the signings look fantastic. Vidage out, 500 grand. I mean, he could be a bargain of the century. I know it's only one game, but you never know. The signings look to knit together well. We know that Rotherham are probably going to be a relegation battler this year, and they did finish with 10 men. But Stoke took advantage. They played them off the park. They were rampant. And in the end, they took their chances, which is something they didn't often do last season. So very encouraging signs, but a way to an aggressive front-footed team that presses them, that's going to be a little trickier. It's going to be the battle of the counter-attacks here because I don't think either side are going to want all of the ball. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. I'm going to go for a bit of maybe a surprise here. I know the Ipswich support will be buoyant. Portman Road getting championship football back. It's going to be a brilliant occasion and I hope you enjoy it if you're an Ipswich fan. But I do think Stoke might nick this game. And whether it's a false dawn after that opening day against Rotherham, I don't know. But I'm going to go for Stoke to nick it. I'm going to go... I think by two goals to one. I was tempted to go for the 1-0 there, but not going to trust a clean sheet. Let's move over to the Den, though, where Millwall will be playing against Bristol City. And you'd be hard-pushed not to back a clean sheet for Millwall, who got a brilliant 1-0 win at Middlesbrough. A very resolute display, and it was, it was all the things we've seen when Millwall are at their best. And it's probably something that we doubted going into the season. Would they bounce back from that disaster at the end of last season? But no one really predicted a Middlesbrough win in the comments. And I think we saw why. Because Millwall, they're just rock solid. For Bristol City, another okay day. A one-all draw. A late equaliser. I mean, how many years do we talk about it? There are some things that never change on these predictions. And Bristol City conceding late goals is one of them under Nigel Pearson, I'm afraid. Losing Vyman early was probably a big loss. And they were relying on younger players to come on later on at times. So... I'm not sure they're going to read too much into it, but with a few players still out, it is not the best start to the season. It's a game they would have liked to have won. And Millwall are home at the Den. You can only predict one winner. Of course, Bristol City turn up with a shock occasionally, but I'm going for Millwall to win it. I'm going to go by two goals to nil. To Lancashire next, does Preston North End host Sunderland? Now, Sunderland had that disappointing start against Ipswich, but we saw last season they were far more of a threat on the road. They've got a big counter-attacking threat, albeit without Ahmad Diallo. Yes, one or two other key injuries, and now the suspension to Hume. I just wonder if it's going to be a slightly slower start for them. Preston at home, well, it was much the same for them, wasn't it? They didn't concede many chances. They started last season very solidly. And Will Keane, good to see him getting a goal on his debut. I didn't know if that was going to be the convincing signing they needed in front of goal, but it was a decent display and a good point away from home in the end. So, promising signs for them. Another side that didn't start that well at home last season. A lot of draws and a few defeats. Very few victories. 
So I just think on the form book, Sunderland win this away from home. But then I look at the players that are missing and they're players that were key to that away form last year. So it does make it a very tricky game to predict this. I'm going to go with Clark and Roberts for Sunderland to get the away win. I'm going to trust what happened last season to work. And I'm going to go for Sunderland to nick it. And this time I am going to go by one goal to nil. Let's move over to two sides who had very differing opening days. It is Rotherham United versus Blackburn Rovers. I can't praise John Dahl Thomason enough because Blackburn are losing key players left, right and centre and they are still delivering performances. A great start against West Brom, two goals in two minutes and then they were fairly resolute defensively which is not something they do too often. Of course they went 27 games at the start of last season without drawing one. And they nearly ended up drawing at the end with a couple of West Brom chances. But they had a goal threat I didn't expect them to have without Brereton Diaz. They still carried that counter-attacking threat. And tactically, they were very well set up. So credit to Thomason. Good result for Blackburn. Away from home, though, it's going to be a lot trickier. And their away form wasn't great last year. Rotherham had a stinker at Stoke. They looked poor. Cafu got sent off. They weren't ready for the season. And they got overrun in stages. Of course, they've got a lot of new players to settle in. And of course, as I mentioned, they lost a lot of that mobility from last year with Harding, with Ogbené, with players like that moving on. But at home, I would expect Rotherham to pick up a lot more points than they did away from home this year. Whether or not they're going to have their strongest side out this week, I'm not too sure. But I am positive that they will be better. And I know looking at this one, it's another one where everyone's going to say, oh, Blackburn will win it 2 or 3-0 because of what happened last week. But I'm not sure it's going to be that easy. So I'm going to go again. For another draw in this game and I'm going to go for the championship's favourite scoreline of 1-1. I've just got the feeling it's going to be a bit of a damp squib that one. So hopefully for those attending I'm completely wrong. Let's move on to a game between two sides I've put in my top six this year. It is Southampton against Norwich City. With Southampton it becomes difficult to predict week by week because we don't know which players they're going to lose. Ward Prowse was part of a brilliant possession display on Friday. How many more weeks is he going to be there? I just don't know the answer. But there were some concerns for Southampton, which was a lack of ruthless edge, lots of the ball, but can you create the chances to win the game? And there was probably only one or two clear cut ones, despite having 23 shots and seven on target. 80% of the ball we're going to have to get used to. But I've mentioned this before. At home, teams are going to set up defensively against them. They're going to sit in with two blocks of four or a four and a five. And can Southampton break that down? It was a problem at times for Russell Martin Swansea. And it was not really the problem of breaking them down either. It was the fact they then got caught on the counter. And Norwich, despite again taking time to take their chances last week, did show they carry a threat right to the end of each half. Adam Edar, we said in the preseason preview, he's got to have a big season. Well, he's got one big goal to get three points on the board, hasn't he? I really like what Norwich have done this summer. And I could see them shocking the odds here. It depends on what players Southampton have got. It's the hardest one to predict. I'm tempted to sit on the fence and go one all, but I'm not going to do you like that. I'm going to go for Norwich to nick a late winner again. And I know that I'm going for a lot of away results this time. I'm going for Norwich by two goals to one. I might look an idiot. You've got to go on a hunch sometimes. So I'm going for Norwich to nick it. But Southampton, a very good opening day for them. Let's move on to the penultimate game. It is High Flying Watford against three point Plymouth Argyle, who joined Ipswich in coming up with momentum. A 3-1 win against Huddersfield in spite of some very hairy moments defensively. Playing out from the back almost cost them a goal or two. But they got the win. They were competitive. And against the Neil Warnock side, a man who knows their team very well having watched them regularly, they still managed to get the result, which is a great start for them. Watford, brilliant against QPR in the first half, blew them away. They took advantage of their lack of defence and they got the result. But... There are going to be a lot of trickier tests to come. And I think even the manager, Valerian Ishmael, knows that. This one on paper, you probably look at as a home win. But if you go back to the end of last season, Plymouth have now made it six wins in a row. They were solid on the road last season. They didn't keep a huge number of clean sheets. So I'm going to bank on them to nick a goal. But I have to be honest and go for Watford here. Yes, I'm a Luton fan that's predicted two Watford wins in a row at the start of the season. You cannot call me bias. I'm going for Watford to win. I'm going to go for the same scoreline that I went for last weekend. I'm going to go 3-1 to Watford. But Plymouth, great to see you off the mark in the opener. And the final game is an interesting one. It is West Bromwich Albion versus Swansea. West Brom, same fragilities again, isn't it? Defensively, a little bit unstable. We said they've got one of the best midfields in a championship. And Matt Phillips popped up with a brilliant goal. 
But defensively, they haven't improved enough. They need a centre-half for me who's going to be a top championship one. And they need a bit more up front because Madja didn't come in for that one. DK's not fit yet. Thomas Asante, is he going to get you in the top six? I'm not sure he's consistent enough. Good threat in midfield and a lot of talent there on the bench and starting. But they've got to deliver more at the two ends of the pitch. And at crucial moments, they weren't able to do that or break down Blackburn. You can't give people a two-goal start. You're not going to get away with it in a championship too often. And talking about gifting teams a lead, oh Swansea. I said now Michael Duff's in that maybe we wouldn't see those goals anymore. Oh, you might as well just copy and paste what we said last year, the year before. Playing out from the back, there's a time and a place and you can't give goals away like that. Great to see Jerry Yates on the score sheet. Great to see them get the point in the end. But against better teams, you'll be punished if you do that. And unfortunately, it cost them an opening day win because otherwise Birmingham didn't look like they were creating many chances or creating great opportunities to score. So on this occasion, Swansea probably going to be a threat. West Brom they weren't convincing, but Corbrand's teams are always solid at home. So I'm going to go for West Brom to win. I've not gone for enough home wins this weekend. I'm going to go for West Brom to win this one. I'm going to go by two goals to one because again, I don't trust either defence to keep a clean sheet. So a few more goals than last weekend. Let's have a quick recap of what I have gone for. What are my big surprises this weekend? Well, I've got Huddersfield to get a result against Leicester, which to be fair, Coventry nearly did last weekend. I've also gone for a draw with Leeds and a defeat at home for Southampton. So none of the relegated sides getting a point for me. I've gone for Coventry to upset Middlesbrough again, just as they did in the playoffs last year. And Stoke to get a surprise at Portman Road to spoil the party there in front of a sold out packed house for the new championship boys. But a really good weekend of football to come. I hope you all enjoy it. I'll be watching from afar at Brighton Beach as hopefully Luton Town get the Premier League season off to a flyer. You can find my preview of that one there, but if you enjoyed this, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. As always, let me know your predictions down in the comments and I will give you a shout out if you beat or match my score next week. Keep your eyes peeled in the eye above for loads of match day action, including clips from the EFL Cup ties I was at the last couple of days. And of course, we're continuing our League One match day predictions. You can find them on YouTube Shorts or on the TikTok channel. But thank you very much for watching as always. Enjoy your game this weekend. And hopefully, I'll be able to keep up my good form, my 11 points from the opening match day. I'll see you next week to find out if I have.